Hello everyone, and welcome to KnitWiz. I'm Kathy, the author of KnitWiz Software. Today we're going to go over the flow for creating an early access project. Before a pattern is published, a designer has the option to designate it for early access, for either test knitting and or a knit-along event. Every designer on KnitWiz has their own early access URL. Here you'll see the Cloisters pattern listed. It's ready for the upcoming KAL on September 11th, 2023. If the sample isn't finished, there will be a drawing of the design, as you see here. Once the sample is finished, the designer will replace his or her drawing with a photo. Click on the View Details button to open a pop-up view, which shows information about yarns and fit. Below the large photo on the left, there's a small yardage estimator. At the top right, you'll see a Create Project instead of the Purchase Pattern button. Patterns are free during the early access period. Now click on Create Project. A new project is created and added to your knitting basket, and you're automatically redirected to your knitting basket. Knitting Basket is highlighted in your sidebar menu. Let's take a minute to talk about the sidebar menu. The project links include those you might want to use once you've created your project. Below the project links section are all of the design links for creating your own design. And below that are a couple of handy links you could use for any project, not just on KnitWiz. Okay, click on View Details for your new project. I'm signed in as a new user so there's just one project in my knitting basket. The first thing you notice is a field for changing the name of your project. I might want to make more than one project with this design, so I'll add in the person I'm making it for, myself in this case. Next, there's a click to update your instructions button. During this period, the designer might want to tweak his or her design based on your feedback. Depending on where you are in your knitting, you may or may not want to incorporate this update into your own instructions. This button gives you that option. And many thanks to one of our first KAL knitters, you know who you are, for this suggestion. Scrolling down, once you've completed your project, go ahead and upload your photo here, and then click Update to save your changes. After the description, you'll see an area which talks a bit about the yarns used. Once you've added measurements, and we're almost there, you'll also see your estimated yardage, or yardages, here. Just below yardages is the measurement area. I haven't ever added anyone's measurements. The first thing I'll see is an Add Measurements button. There's also an in-depth blog post on taking measurements. Links to these will be in the description below. Okay, go ahead and click on Add Measurements. You can take them by yourself, but it's easier to have someone else help, especially for the back measurements. I won't talk about all of them, but do want to point out a couple of tricky measurements, and the first of which is the back neck width measurement. The easiest way to take this measurement, and thanks to Suzanne Bryan for this method, is to drape a piece of yarn around your neck so that both ends hang in front. Then measure between the strands of yarn. This is your back neck width measurement. For most adults, this measurement is between 5 and 7 inches. The second measurement is your arm opening depth. The best technique I found for this is to place a straight knitting needle under your arm comfortably. Make sure it's parallel to the ground. Measure from the bony bump on the top of your shoulder down to the top of the knitting needle. Moving on, I filled out all of the measurement fields. Click Save. I'm now taken back to my knitting basket. When I go back to my project details, I can see that the view has changed. I'm able to select my measurements for this project. If I had measurements for the whole family, they'd all show up here. But I only have the one measurement. I still need to select it. Once I select my measurements, they are listed both here and on the instructions page. 
Now the finished schematics are also dynamically generated based on your measurements. This usually takes a few seconds, so you won't see them until you go back to the knitting basket and then come back to the project details. Or, alternatively, you can click on Get Your Instructions and you'll see them then. But what if I want to change my yarn or my gauge? Your schematics may change depending on your actual stitch count, so these will be regenerated with your updates. Close the schematics accordion and you'll come to the yarn substitution area. If you're using the same yarn and colors, you can skip this section. Check the box for the yarn you'd like to swap. In this case, perhaps I want to use a second color for the ribbing. Then I'd substitute one yarn at a time. Otherwise, I can select all the boxes and all swatches will update to use the same yarn. If I don't see the yarn I'm looking for in the drop-down, I'll need to add it to my private yarn stash. Click Add to Yarn Stash. Fill in the name of and color fields which are required and as many of the other fields as you'd like. Click Add Yarn at the bottom to save. This time you're taken to the list view of all your yarns. So go back to your knitting basket, then click on your project details. Scroll back down, and now you'll be able to substitute your new yarn. Project. If you're only changing the color of the yarn, you won't need to change these numbers. More on this in a minute. Okay, let's talk gauge. Sometimes you'll need to make a swatch for each stitch pattern. Sometimes, as with the cloisters, you'll only need one swatch for the main rib pattern because the lace panels flow from the ribbing. It should be noted on your pattern whenever this is the situation. Now it's time to make swatches. The stitches used are listed just below. Open the accordion to view the instructions. If a chart is displayed, it's displayed right side up. The cloisters is worked top down, so you'll want to work your swatch from the top down as well. For the cloister's lace chart, begin with round 20. Come back to the video at this point if you prefer to stop and make your swatches. If you're using a different yarn, make a note of how many yards of each color you use in each swatch. Enter the amounts for each yarn in the yarn substitution section. Knit as is comfortable for you. Check the fabric. Do you like the drape? Do you need to change needle size? One of the benefits of a computer program is that you don't need to match the designer's gauge. Click on Edit Swatch Details. The numbers you see here have been copied from the designer's swatches. Make a note of your pre-blocked gauge and then block and dry your swatches. Enter your blocked gauge numbers here. For the cloisters pattern, enter the same gauge for the lace insert as for the ribbing. If you're using the metric system or have made a yarn substitution, enter the total width and height numbers of your swatch sample. Double check your yardage or meterage in the yarn section. It may have changed. Yay, it's time to get your instructions. Toggle the green arrow in the sidebar to use the entire screen for viewing. If you have a printer, print your instructions or print to PDF. If you're using a tablet or an iPad without a print function, then you can download the instructions using the download button at top right. You're all set, and I'll see you at the next Zoom meeting. Thanks for watching.